Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to monitor your website using a platform called Alati. So if you have a website up, you want to make sure that everything is good with that website at every single point in time. And if something goes wrong, you want to be the first to know before it affects your users. You can do this using Alati. Alati is a platform that basically helps you monitor your website. It doesn't just only monitor your website, it monitors your CDN, your databases and more. Alati is very quick and easy to use and I'm going to show you how to use this to monitor your website in this video. So without wasting any time, let's get straight into this video. So right here I have a landing page for my backend course. Now this is the page where users can come to see everything about the course and input their email to keep in touch. So as you can see, this is a very important landing page or website for my course. Now I want to make sure that this website is up at all times and a user can easily access it any time of the day when they want. To do this, I need to monitor this website. So I need to make sure nothing goes wrong at any time. And if something goes wrong, I want to know that something has gone wrong immediately. To do this, we're going to use Alatly. So Alatly is a platform that basically allows you to monitor everything you use as a developer. So not just monitoring your website, so stuff like monitoring CDN, status pages, databases, and so much more. I'm going to show you what Alatly can do. So first of all, go to alatly.ai. There will be a link in the description below that will take you directly to this page right here. And what you need to do is to click on this get started button and it's going to take you through a process to just basically sign up. And that is very straightforward. Just put in your email and sign up. And once that is done, it's going to bring you to this dashboard right here. So as you can see, it says, hey there, let's get started by monitoring your website or app. So Alatly monitors three things. It monitors the uptime of your website, the latency, and the load time of this website. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to copy the link to this landing page. I'm just going to paste it in here. That is all you need to do and click on create three monitors. So that is the first thing we need to do to basically create this particular monitoring service for this website. So right now, if I come back to the home page, you're going to see that it says checking. It takes a couple of seconds to check and just to save time on my other Alatly account, I already started monitoring this 24 hours ago and I did that so that you can see how it looks like once the website is being monitored. So this is what it's going to look like. It's monitoring three things, uptime, load time and latency. I'm going to click on uptime right here. And as you can see under here, we have something called incidents. So you can pause this monitoring, you can view the resource, which is just going to bring us back to this page. So let's go back there and you can see that it's checked every two minutes. So it's checked very frequently. Now you can see, as I said, something here called incidents. Now what this does is that if there's any problem that is being detected, it is automatically going to create an incident. So I'm just going to take one example. Right here, we can see that there was an error status detected in the uptime monitoring. I just click on that and it's going to show us a summary of that particular error and it says detected status code 500. The expected status code was 400. So if you're a web developer, you're going to know that the HTTP status code 400 means that your website is up and running, but 500 is an error code. So right here, what you can do is you can basically see what happened. As you can see, we can see the error code and you can also collaborate with others, let's say in your team to mitigate this from happening another time. So you can put a note of something like a hey, team. Let's make sure this doesn't happen again. Right. And you can just post that. So it's basically a way for you to manage everything that goes wrong with your website. And right here at the right hand corner, you're going to see that we have an assistant. So this is going to help you solve any error you want or you can even ask it any question and it also has the context of alertly i'm going to give you an example so right here i could just come in and say explain this to me so let me tell you to explain this particular error that we got and i'm just going to say error status detected 500 I'm going to hit enter and right here, you're going to see that it says Alatly is typing. We're just going to give it a couple of seconds and it's going to give us the answer to what we just asked. 
So as you can see right here, it gave us all the answer. It's telling us it's an HTTP status code error. It's telling us everything that happened and now we can even solve that. And it's telling us by using Alatly, you can have a comprehensive understanding of your infrastructure's health. So it's telling us everything. Now we can also use Alatly to kind of mitigate or solve this and all of that. Now, this is how you can easily monitor your website. Now, as default, Alatly is going to send you emails whenever something goes wrong with your website. So we're going to come into settings and I'm going to show you how to set this up. So you go into settings and come down here to where you see notifications. So you can see that email is automatically configured. We didn't need to do that ourselves. You can even click on trigger test alert to just see like a test email. So you see how it's going to look when something goes wrong with your website. But right here, you can see that we also have the Slack option. So this Slack option basically allows you to receive alerts in your Slack channel. So for example, let's say you work in a team and you all have a Slack channel and you want the alerts to be notified in that Slack channel so everyone in your team can easily see what happens at every time. You can configure that by clicking on this button and connecting your Slack channel to it. So this is how that is going to look. For now, I'm just going to quit that. So this is how you can basically monitor your website. So back here, you can see that this page is now being monitored. It took a couple of seconds to check and make sure everything is good. Then it started monitoring that page. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you how to monitor is a CDN. Now you can use a CDN to monitor stuff like traffic spikes. So for example, if a bunch of traffic comes to your website, you just want to know that, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now there are two options, Cloudflare and AWS CloudFront. Let me just click on one of them. I'm going to click on AWS CloudFront. So these are the information you need. The CloudFront distribution ID, AWS access key ID, and AWS secrets key ID. Um, what I'm just going to do is to show you how to get this distribution ID. So right here in my AWS console, what you need to do is to search for CloudFront I can see it right here, so I'm just going to click on it. Now, once this loads, if you have a distribution ID, so if you've created a CDN through AWS CloudFront, you should see a list of your distributions right here, and you should see the ID right there. Right now, I do not have that, so I'm not going to see any distribution or a distribution ID. But once you come to this page, you should see the distribution ID for that CDN, and all you just need to do is to come in here and paste that in here. The next thing you need to do is to get your AWS access key ID and AWS secrets access key. So these are the credentials for your AWS account that you create once your account is created and you create a new user. So if you do use AWS to create a CDN, you should have all of this information. I'm just going to quickly show you how you can get this also. So you're going to come back here and let's go back to the, I'm going to come into services and I'm going to click on IAM right here. And once that loads up, I'm going to show you how to get those information. So once again, I'm not going to actually get this information, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. So what you can do is to come into users and you can create user. So once you create a new user and you complete this step, you're going to be given this information right here. And this information, I'm pretty sure you can only show it once. The AWS is only going to show you this information once. So once you have that information, you need to save it somewhere just for future purposes. So that is how you can do that. Now, Cloudflare is also similar. You just need to make sure you have the information needed and you can basically monitor stuff like traffic spike, which is very important, right? You want to know when there's a lot of traffic coming into your website so you can scale up your resources to manage those traffic. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about in here is status pages. So right here, you can see that we can easily monitor stuff like GitHub, OpenAI, Vercel, and more. So what the startup pages is, it basically allows you to monitor the services you use in your website. So for example, let's say you're a developer and you developed a web application. For example, let's say a social media application. And for the login, for the authentication of users, you used Auth0. Now, what you want to do is to monitor Auth0 to make sure that nothing happens to Auth0. So if anything happens to Auth0, for example, if that service is down, you want to be alerted, right? You want to receive an email saying Auth0 is down. This means that your users or your application will be affected, something like that. 
But for example, let's say you are building an application that uses OpenAI GPT-4 API. If OpenAI is down and it's not accessible, you want to receive an alert saying that OpenAI is down. Now, this directly means that something has been affected in your application too, so you can, you know, fix that. Now, you want to know when something happens to any of the service you use. So what you can just do is to easily click on, for example, if I want to monitor OpenAI, I can just click on OpenAI and click on create one monitor and it automatically gets the status page of OpenAI. So instead of you having to search up for, you know, OpenAI status page and manually always going there to make sure everything is good, you can automate this with Alati. So I don't want to monitor this. I'm just going to cancel. Let me show you everything you can monitor. Status pages. You can see that there's so much you can monitor, right? all the way from Okta to Covery to Railway, you know, to Solana, Superbase, everything. So I'm just going to show you how to monitor Auth0. So you could just click on this. You could monitor multiple, to be honest. But let's just keep it simple and monitor only Auth0. Now, once, just like I said, Auth0 is used for adding authentication into your application, right? So let's just add one status page. And once again, that is going to do all the checks to make sure everything is good. Then it's going to monitor it and show you and alert you when something is wrong or an incident happens at odd zero. So guys, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you understood and enjoyed everything that we did in this video. So go to alertly.ai and sign up and use this application and tell me what you think about it in the comments below. Also, if you have any question that you want to be answered, drop it in the comment below and I'll make sure to check all comments. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.